Therefore, you and I have to accept that we were united with Christ to shine like lights in the world. And the way we're supposed to do that in this passage is that we're supposed to pursue or seek to be without defect in a crooked and twisted generation. That there is a formational component to this. That to give ourselves this to sin or to darkness or to the world ultimately has a twisting effect. It makes us dark. It makes us defected by sin. And we're supposed to pursue to be presented to Christ blameless and without defect, right? To pursue that, we have to actually pursue actually being blameless and pure. That's not wrong. I know for some of you who were affected very negatively by stuff that's sometimes called extreme purity culture, you do like, you, ha- you almost have anaphylactic shock. You're like, where's my EpiPen when you hear the word pure? Like, I get that. And I know for some of you, that reaction is deserved, okay? The word purity isn't about women's sexuality mainly, and the word modesty isn't about mainly how women dress. Do you understand that? It's a fundamentally general concept. Modesty is not putting ourselves forward for higher status in an inordinate way. That's what modesty is. It's not your neckline. Now, you can use your neckline if you're a woman to do that, but there's lots of ways everybody is constantly doing that, like talking too much in a group of people right? And so modesty has this broad meaning. So does purity. Purity is knowing the one thing and not admixing things that dilute it or poison it. That's what purity means. Knowing what the one thing is. Glorifying God. Being honest to God. Pleasing God. Being God's right steward. Doing what you were made for, what's ordinate to your nature as an image bearer of God holding to and walking in Christ's redemption as you are made more perfect in that. That one thing, believing that one thing, following that one thing, embodying that one thing, that's what purity is. Does that mean that you're not going to have sex with random— yes, that's it's one of the things it means, right? Does it mean you'll dress modestly so people aren't inordinately sexually attracted to you in ways that are raising your status wrongly. Yes. It also means that you'll listen instead of talk. It also means that you'll give to the poor. It also means a thousand other things that will flow from that purity and that pursuit of righteousness and blamelessness. Does that make sense? In that sense, blamelessness and purity are supposed to be parallel because to a large extent, purity is blamelessness. 